Hey friends, and welcome back to another episode of Joypad Podcast. My name's Megan. I hope you know that. If not, now you do. I'm joined by my uh, my co-host, Mr. Fleming, Mr. Pinto, and Tom, uh, who was giving the people's uh, eyebrow there pretty intensely. I like it. I'm into it. Anyway, save me from myself, Mr. Pinto. How are you? What are you drinking? And what have you been playing, if anything? I'm pretty good. I'm sleepy. Uh, I stayed for overtime today because I'm an adult who needs to make wise financial decisions. And I still kind of regret it. That's okay. I'm just drinking water. I had a nice fizzy beverage earlier to try and uh, get some caffeine into my body because I'm so tired. I thought about having another one and thought, it'd be a bad idea. Heart palpitations. Heart, I mean, dude, I already had two monsters this morning, so. Um, Heart palpitations. <laughs> yeah. So now I, I'm cooling it down with some good old H2O for the rest of the night. That was fun. Yeah. And, uh, man, it's happened again. I've fallen back. I've fallen back into the old habits. And I'm playing myself some Stardew Valley again. Ooh. Started a new farm, and uh, I've just been playing Stardew Valley and watching Cutthroat Kitchen because uh, I love Alton Brown. Cutthroat Kitchen <laughs> is great, and that's that's really all I've been playing. I've I kind of cooled it on uh, the the Let's Plays right now because I have a, a big backlog built up, and I just don't feel like doing it right now. And I'm I'm okay with that. I accept that decision. When the motivation comes back, I'll start doing it. That is that's acceptable. Spirit. Yep. That's what we call being kind to yourself. Ooh. Growth. I know. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I don't think I've really played anything else, to be honest. We played a little Ultimate Chicken Horse last week. After, after, after laughter, after the episode. <laughs> okay, Paramore. Thank you. Uh, new album coming out soon. <laughs> Yeah. And that game is still fun. Will that game ever not be fun? I don't think so. Mm -mm. I think that's it, though. I really have been thinking about playing Breath of the Wild, and I just still haven't brought myself to do it. But It's a I, commitment. It is! It's, that's the thing! Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think I will get there. It's also a slow like, builder of a game. So, like, that's why it's so much of a commitment. You have to be willing and able to get rid of the get through the beginning growing pains i never finished it i i got like way too overwhelmed by the open worldness of it mm. you know it was just such a new take on zelda um i couldn't do it I, it was fun i just i couldn't do it the weird thing <gasps> is the other day Maybe. i i found myself thinking that I kind of wanted to buy Link's Awakening. And I was like, why would I buy Link's Awakening when I haven't even played the Z the new Zelda game I have? So, um... It's a new take on a great it Zelda is. game. Yeah, so I... I, I haven't I, played it yet. I do think that I need to complete Breath of the Wild before I buy Link's Awakening. I have a lot of games I still need to play that I should play before I buy new games. We've had this discussion 8,000 times before. <laughs> Dead Space. Oh, God, that's next week, isn't it? It is. Oh, the 27th, I think. Man. Dang. 27th, big week. Yeah, I'm Surprised. definitely going to want that. I don't know. I, 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 I've i talked enough. Uh, Mr. Fleming, what are you <laughs> drinking? I know what you've been playing, but you should share it with the rest of us. I will and, share uh, it. How, how you Ooh. doing, etc., etc. Okay, I do have my water as normal, because hydration is very important to me. Also known as key. Uh, tonight, I am drinking a new beverage. Oh. It is a cola beverage, but it's a different brand. I'll give you a hint. Royal Crown the... Cola. Yes! RC, I'm baby. not even Boom. kidding. Oh. I'm not even kidding. I, For some reason, I don't know why, but I bought it, and I had a little bit left, so that is what I'm drinking. Nice. I'm drinking what Royal your, Crown Cola. Your comparison thoughts. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I actually like RC Cola. Is it so. better than Coke? No. Coke's better. When I was little, I didn't know what the RC stood for, so I thought it was like remote control cola. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. But yeah, no, it's what it is. Royal, Royal well, Crown. Tonight it is me and my RC, as their advertisements say. That is an unsponsored ad, but I'm that in is contact. A lonely we'll slogan. 
<laughs> oh, it, <laughs> it is. is. <laughs> it really, really is. <laughs> yes, what, you've really got is. plans? Well, tonight, baby, it's just me and my RC. <laughs> Alone. Smidge agrees with that. In a studio apartment. <laughs> For those Staring listening at the, the gray walls and the yes. skyscrapers of New York slums. <laughs> While I watch Three's Company. Me and my RC! <laughs> well, anyway, so I am drinking RC Cola. Um, and I am doing well, I think. Um, you think? Yeah, I think. Uh, for games... <clears throat> so, last week I said I was playing Uncharted because uh, a good friend purchased them for me. And I beat the game last weekend um uncharted 4 and i'd already beaten whatever the other one's called in the series that i forget they're like dl it's like a dlc but it's not a dlc it was like a yeah, game it's after it's it's yeah off. oh yeah 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 the one with nadine again and um whatever her name was that i already forget some girl fraser car carly i forget fraser whatever. crane Fraser Crane. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but anyway, so and scrambled eggs. when you first like, I played on the on hard. That was the highest difficulty allowed me to play, and I beat the game. And I struggled a little bit, mostly because like mechanically you have to figure it out. But you can't play on crushing difficulty, also known as brutal in the older games. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go and play like the hardest encounter, or play what I think will be the hardest encounter. Go and look, and it is the hardest encounter. And it was hilarious. It was so difficult. And then me being me was like, all right, I got to do it. I'm going to beat the game again as quick as I can doing it. And I'm actually doing it pretty fast. I think I've played for about 10 hours. So it's basically been my night like all week. Um, but it's very frustrating. <laughs> very, very frustrating. Um, and it's played very differently. I got there's like a surprise attack at one point in a mansion and uh there's a lot of guys and they have many powerful weapons and they never miss. So you have to, Ooh, yeah, you have to go between bad. like go between shots and you got to run around. When I finally beat it, I almost went outside and screamed like tears of joy. <laughs> and I actually did it about an hour before, like now before the podcast started. So very happy with that. I've got five, I think more chapters. Cause I think there's like 26 chapters and I'm on 19 or I guess 24 chapters and I'm on 19. Um, something like that. So I'm almost done the game on the hardest difficulty, but I know chapter 20, which is the one that I test drove, if you will, uh, earlier um, on Sunday, uh, is coming up and it's coming up quickly and it's going to be very hard. But <laughs> yes, so that's what I've been playing and I haven't played basically anything else because I, I set my sights on this and I kind of regret it, but also I'm happy <laughs> that I'm doing it. And like you guys know, I'm I'm very good at FPS games, especially computer-based FPS games. So like I'm getting headshots all the time and and aiming really well, but like it's just it's a very difficult game, very very difficult at that difficulty at least. So yes, that is what I'm doing. Uh, enough about that. Tom, you and your RC, how are you doing? Uh, what are you drinking? And uh, what have you been playing? I guess my RC is my cat because those uh, who are listening to the podcast uh, haven't seen the visual that is uh, a cat sitting right next to me. So he's my regal cat. Uh, I'm drinking some green tea and um, <clears throat> that's about it tonight. I've been playing uh, a game that I'm probably going to rant about for a while because uh, I love it <laughs> and I'm happy. And it's one of the first times in a long time that I can say I've like, gotten a new game and played it and felt amazing about it um it and, madden? and i love that yes it's madden 28 uh just wait <laughs> five years and you too can experience the joy awesome um no it's uh marvel's midnight suns oh uh, which came out in december uh middle of december so like right before christmas i want to say sounds right yeah it went on steam sale around the new year uh, and I managed to buy both it and the season pass for roughly the price of the original game without discount. So I felt good about that. And then I let it sit there for a little bit. And this past weekend, I said, eh, give that oh, give that game a try. Um, and I hope it you said is, it just like that. Yes. In my brain, I did at least. OK. Um, it's probably one of my favorite games ever already. Um, and I've already put in 36 hours on it. So I've been playing it a lot, basically every evening, 
for as long as I can. And for those of you have, who have played XCOM, it has that same kind of tactical RPG feel as XCOM, except you don't really have to worry about navigating a board and doing overwatches or concealment or getting around enemies and stuff. It's much more of like an open battlefield and you have different areas where you need to focus on the range of your abilities, but you can basically always get to the enemy you want to attack uh, where the range comes in is whether or not they're in range of environmental attacks or knockbacks uh, or area of effect, stuff like that. Uh, and it makes you, it doesn't make you feel underpowered as a superhero, which is really cool. Um, and it also combines in mechanics from a game like Slay the Spire, where you have cards. So each hero has their own card decks and uh, you get to pick what cards you want to bring into battle. There are different restrictions on the ways you set up what they come in with. And then you get different cards over time. You bring in three heroes for each battle. Um, and you combine those different power sets uh, based on what you get and how many moves you get per turn and how your cards impact that. Uh, and it's really well thought out and orchestrated so that the combat is basically fun all the time. Um, and I I love that. I mean, I just it, it's got characters you love from Marvel. It's got some new characters that I love. And it has a story that isn't just trivial. Like there's an actual good AAA plot going on. I don't want to spoil a whole lot, um, but it it makes sense and it goes places. And characters have character and emotional depth, and they grow and change over time. Even though they're Marvel characters that you know and love, and you can do things like you have to know their personality to get friendship points with them to increase their levels and get new things that they can do and abilities. And there's a whole lot of customization. <laughs> uh, everyone has at least three different suits that they can unlock over time. And each suit has like 15 different color palettes you can apply to it. Uh, the main character that you have is a customizable character uh, that's called the Hunter. And you can be male or female, and ha there's a slew of even more customizations for that character. I think sh he or she has like 12 or more suits. Uh, it's just, it's really impressive, um, and it's really fun, and it's really good. Um, and I just, I want to say kudos to the 2K and Firaxis team that worked on it, uh, and I want to encourage people to buy it and play it, because we need more of this. Just games that get it right, please. It, I would have been fine if it wasn't even a Marvel game. If it was a, um, like an XCOM, XCOM game or something 3? that followed the That's same what way. I was yeah. Say. <laughs> yeah, and I did see someone. Uh, I looked up some reviews before I bought it or started playing it, and someone derided it as being less XCOM, more XCOM Chimera Squad. I still have yet to play Chimera Squad, even though I own it. Me too. I played like <laughs> three or four missions in it, but um, does it? From what I've said, does it sound similar or is yeah. Chimera Squad more similar? To, um, yeah, because XCOM one and two, you just kind of have like generic soldiers and their classes. Um, Chimera Squad is much more like each character is unique and has their own abilities. So that that sounds more like what you're talking about because you know it's Marvel, it's superheroes, so they're going to have their own um, power sets. Powers, right? yeah, yeah. As opposed to like eight, you know, th four or five different kinds of soldiers with only two different branching paths that each soldier can go on, which is yeah. how XCOM one and two worked. Yeah. And it's just a slightly different type of game, which is fine. Like, there's no, like I said, there's no grid, there's no cover. You don't have to deal with those kind of things in Midnight Suns. Um, and I, it makes for a different experience, which you should have because you're a superhero, right? It's, you don't have to worry so much about getting scratched up or shot the way that uh, mortal soldier fighting aliens would. Um, and it feels good. And I feel good about buying the season pass, too. There's actually DLC coming out on the 26th, so just next week, a week from today. They are bringing out Deadpool as a new character. Uh, and along with that, there's going to be new missions and villains and story. So, like, that's the way you do DLC. Like, 
yay please please more please is there um Keep doing it <laughs> i you mentioned it a little bit is there uh accuracy like there is in xcom where you're like 85 percent and then you miss and the entire mission goes to shit i i think that would have screwed this game up nope uh there there are percent chances for things to happen on some cards so you will always hit um however you some environmental hazards you're like knocking somebody off of a cliff or into a pit ghost rider can open up pits to hell and you can knock people into a pit to hell uh and there's a certain percentage when you go to knock someone into the pit uh, of whether or not they'll get knocked in or not because it's an instant kill if they get knocked in um other cards will have like 20 percent chance to apply stun 20 percent chance to add um counter to your character uh x amount percent to add binding spider-man but at the same time spider-man has cards that are uh guaranteed bind like web up an enemy um dr strange has a card that'll do that too um so it's it kind of takes that piece out of it which again i think is good for a superhero game because i think people will be getting pissed off if they're like oh god wolverine can't hit anything you know it it puts in that element of like that fantastical. They're a superhero. They're gonna hit stuff. They might just need to hit it a couple times to beat it up. So, yeah, I I feel really good about it. I love it. Um, the other thing I I really like again, there's and like almost endless customization, uh, and it has a loot box mechanic, but it's not paid. So you discover chests in the game and different items that you open to get new powers for your characters so you get that same like brain happy reward sensation of opening up a loot box but you don't pay anything for it it's just part of the game there's no microtransactions in it it's just there so it's it's really well constructed from that perspective too um i mean you can you can just tell a lot of love was put into it so um, I'm 36 almost hours into it, and I feel like I will get at least 36 more hours. <laughs> so that's that's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> Megan, how are you doing? What are you drinking? Uh, did you enjoy this rant? Yes slash no. Um, <laughs> what are you playing? Maybe. Uh, no, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, as always, I'm enjoying my, my unsweetened leaf water. I did enjoy the rant. Um, and I, I will say, I always appreciate the fact that you are so impassioned when you talk about the games that you play, because I was having some internet issues, uh, and like I was getting every other word that you guys were saying. So I was able to troubleshoot and resolve my concern. But hey. what I heard, um, it, it sounds super cool. I don't know that it's my style of game but i'm i'm glad you're enjoying it thank you mm -hmm. uh as for myself i'm not really playing a whole lot of anything new i did buy a couple of games i haven't had the opportunity to play them yet i've just been really busy and uh trying to be a responsible human being and go to bed at a normal time which is i don't know what that means yeah it's weird um i don't i don't do that uh so I, I've really just been playing Persona 5 in my spare time uh, because that is my next game that I want to finish. Um, trying to continue my quest of completing more games before I buy other games. So that's about it for me. Uh, as far as topics, I don't really have anything specific. I don't know about you, gentlemen. I know Mr. Pinto uh, did not partake but did either of you watch the last of us over the weekend I did <sighs> you did yeah yeah thank goodness what did you think <laughs> uh i thought it was good like it pretty much held true to like the story of the original from what i mm -hmm. remember um and i think there were a lot of misgivings about like the casting of joel uh initially mm -hmm. uh i forget the actor's name off the top of my head the mandalorian uh, there we go. That's his name. Uh, I don't, <laughs> Pedro I don't, Pascal. Yeah, that's it. Um, he did a great job. I, he did. I thought he was great. Uh, the actress that got to do Ellie did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, um, she's really, really good for a kid. Like, it's like you shouldn't be that good an actress when you're that young, <laughs> um, especially with the things she does and says. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but no, I, I 
if anything, I felt like it was too much on the rails, but that's just me. Mm. Um, you know, I think we, I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast before, but we've at least talked about it together about how they don't really plan to, uh, go beyond the content of the games themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and to me, I, I kind of feel like if you're not going to explore beyond the existing media, what's the point of making new media? Right. Um, but that's just my perspective. <laughs> that's just like my opinion, man. Um, <laughs> and I think what they did, they executed very well. So, yeah, even like they they didn't change a lot. But what they changed, I think, added to the overall way that the story is going to be told. Um and I don't hate it. Like I, I, I do like what they did. Even Joel's filming... drug thing is weird. What's That's... that? Joel's drug thing is weird. I'll oh yeah, that that, that is. I mean, he he was a smuggler. They never like really talked about what it was, other than what the guns. I think in the game. Yeah, and assumedly people. True, and people. Um, but yeah, I do agree with you on the drugs. Um, I don't think but... it's terrible. I just think no. like. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's at least a, a different thing, I guess. So. Uh huh. And the 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 cold open that they did, which mm. I don't I don't want to spoil anything for Fleming or Pinto in case they decide to watch it. Um, but it, just how they kind of introduced the idea of cordyceps, um, which was pretty cool. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm excited. Oh, to the see... uh, the talk show. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked that. That was um. Someone, someone who has a little bit of a pharma background now. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, it's not bacteria; it's fungi. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, that that was super cool. I I do love the casting. I'm really happy with Ellie. I'm really happy with Joel. Um. She's the perfect foul mouth. Uh. Fourteen year old. Yeah. Um. Although that... I think she's like an adult actually. Oh. Okay. That's good. Like um... nineteen, I think. Wow, she looks really young for. She 19. looks like a child, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's that, we call that Arya Stark syndrome. Um, <laughs> but um, no, she she did great. Um, mm -hmm. I thought the actress they had that did Joel's daughter was really good too. Yeah. Uh, I forget her name, but a like a thousand percent. Yeah, even that like scene they had where she was over at the neighbor's house and the old lady was like freaking out in the background in the chair. Yes. Oh, yes. That was that was cool. <laughs> So. <laughs> now, um, I I watched it with Christy. Did has Jen played The Last of Us? Uh, she has watched me play The Last of okay. Us because that's how she chooses to enjoy those types of Got video it. games. Because I I just sat there the entire time, like talking through it with Christy, and I'm sure I drove her crazy. Um, but just talking about like that was in the game, or that's different, or I really <laughs> like how they did that. Even the drive into town. Uh, how they shot oh, yeah. it from like behind everyone, so it, it was like that experience from the game, which was really cool. But there, there, there was enough that it it switched it up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of of what else. Oh, the the tendrils, because I know we talked about I think last time how they're not doing spores. Yes. Um, I, I didn't feel like I saw a whole lot of that, but it didn't really play much of an impact. In, I think in my perception, just in the beginning uh at night when sarah's in the house and you see uh, the old woman yes that that was creepy as fuck um yeah and i think a great take on it like i was kind of iffy until i saw that and i'm like nope that's terrifying and i hate every bit of it <laughs> <laughs> that is awful <laughs> yeah the way they treat the condition is every bit the same as you would expect from the games yeah um so i i feel good about that um i thought the relationship like they kind of showed between joel and the guard when he was kind of working oh, that yeah, angle yeah. i thought that was interesting mm -hmm. um i don't think there was a whole lot of that in the game but i don't really remember right um so i was perfectly okay with that i mean mm -hmm. there would definitely be an economy for like pills and cigarettes in this kind of area and that's the kind of thing that would happen uh also also joel taking the uh shit cleaning job because oh it pays yeah more yep which <laughs> one pays cool. more <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i'm i'm very happy with what they have right now um mm -hmm. i would still like to see them probably do a just a little bit more 
um, that deviates, but I think they're sticking to the right path. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what uh, episode two holds. I know. As far as adaptions, I'm I'm super pleased. I'm really excited to see what happens. Everyone keeps saying wait for episode three because I guess that's like a lot of they put up to episode three out to a lot of media outlets. Mm. Um. So that that is apparently the one to look out for. Oh, um, interesting. So, so we'll see. I, I again, I hope Pinto and Fleming you get an opportunity to watch it so that we can all talk about it. Um, it's definitely worth it. Did you um, did you think the intro was to Game of Thrones? Because I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> oh, with uh, like the actual when you hear the song for the first time. The, yeah, the song and when they're just moving, like the cinematography of it, where they're kind of like building the, yeah. uh, I don't know what you would call that, like a spore network or uh-huh. tentacle colony or something. It did uh, it, it did definitely give me Game of Thrones uh, yeah. vibes. I, I liked the very end, though, where you see the two, like, whatever you would call it, uh, uh, little little bits of fungi that like yeah. pop up and it's like Joel and, and Ellie, you know, alluding yeah. to two people walking side by side. That was nice, but yeah, it, it definitely gives the Game of Thrones vibes. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was no. funny that it was similar. I, I think someone gave this, <laughs> made the comment of how um, we we not only get to see Pedro Pascal get his uh, head caved in uh, once, but twice. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> he was the Dread Piper. Uh-huh. So if you haven't watched Game of Thrones or played The Last of Us Part 2 at this point, get on it. Um, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> someone made the comment that they were like, oh, man, you know, next thing they're going to do is do something divisive, like get make Joel get the shit kicked out of him and beaten to death at the beginning of the next season. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, there's a golf club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, um, that's, it, that's, uh, that's it for me on The Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just gonna say, I think video game TV has come a long way. Oh, for sure. Um, cause back in the day, I mean, I can remember all the garbage Resident Evil and, um, Tomb Raider movies. Mm. Um, and the Witcher TV series was actually very good as well. I've um, heard that. I haven't watched it. Yes, the the Henry Cavill ones. Uh, we watched like the first twenty minutes or so of the new spinoff series they put out. Okay. Which I don't really, I don't know. I didn't really have any interest in it. It didn't really didn't play into anything. what we were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a little miffed that uh, Cavill left the series to go be Superman, and then they were like, and "Hey, you're not, not Superman, Superman anymore." <laughs> But he gets to do Warhammer now, I think, right? I guess that's good. I'm sure he'll be great in it. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I don't think I would ever quit anything to be Superman because I think Superman kind of sucks. <laughs> but <laughs> I can understand Superman. it though. Like that oh, yeah, was yeah. that was his thing. But he was, I, I think too. Um, it it sounds like the series was starting to fall into what a lot of successful television series or, or shows fall into where it's let's not, you know, do what the source is all about. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's make it wild and different, which is okay in, in, in some regard, because you do need to expand on it for television. Like we were talking about with the last of us, how like you're sticking to the games, but like, let's explore the world a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like they were moving like way away from source material and he he wasn't that. about that. Yeah. And I mean, I, I I guess my point with The Last of Us isn't so much about change things just to change mm-hmm. them. It's more of like dig deeper into what you have. Right. Um, and there are certain spots where they've done that, which is cool. Yeah. But yeah. With The Witcher, there is a very robust source material, especially because it's all based on old like polit polish uh myth and legend Mm -hmm. so it's all out there in writing to begin with too so there's not a whole lot of need to change what's going on yeah uh i i feel like you're 
write like there are a lot of writers and directors that feel like they want to put their own spin on things just to make sure it has their stamp mm-hmm. uh and i think if you're actually good at your job you can rise above that <laughs> true so very true yeah it, game adaptions have been iffy um, yeah as we all know um mortal Kombat, uh street i don't know Fighter. what you're talking about <laughs> uh street oh. fighter uh mario <laughs> poor poor raul julia oh, and street i was gonna fighter. say that mario mario Come and on. teenage Mutant ninja turtles movie were amazing tmnt yeah can't be that amazing. turtles in time yep. oh yeah the the original mario brothers is that what you're referring to <laughs> I, with uh, yes bowser I am. the man <laughs> with bowser dennis the man. Den- he they never called him bowser he was king koopa yes oh, that's right <laughs> you're that's absolutely right, right. Coked up. Well, I think I think Dennis Hopper was off the coke by then, actually. But, <laughs> but from what I have read about it after the fact, Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo were very drunk for most of the recording of that movie. <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, I it'll be interesting to see how the Mario movie with um, Chris Pratt goes. Yeah, it. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I, I don't know, like how you guys understood the trailers, but it seems like Mario is just a regular guy that gets transported into this world. Yes, that's that was also my understanding. Okay. Mario Which seems a little odd. Should be a fat Italian plumber. As he was made, not Chris Pratt. That's just my thought. They should have <laughs> found even if Chris Italian Pratt does plumber. an amazing job. Even if he does an amazing job, it's just like, well, why Chris Pratt? Have you seen the people? trailer? Because I have doesn't. not. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's not good. He, he sounds exactly like Chris Pratt. He oh, does. Yeah. I, uh, to your point, Fleming. <laughs> I think they should have just found a big fat Italian plumber off the streets, given him a plate of spaghetti. And had him go be Mario. Isn't uh isn't what's his face though like still alive? Yes, the, the voice voiced? of Mario. Charles Martin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's in the movie. He is not as I Mario though. I don't know how. <laughs> like why? Why do we need to do that? I, I guess the only thing I can think of that's justifiable is that people would think it's weird to hear him give actual dialogue no. <laughs> instead of just his. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's me, Mario. I'm here to save the princess. I don't care if that's all Mario says throughout the entire movie. Like, if Toad and and Peach and, like, if they want to carry it with dialogue, absolutely. Let Mario just make noises. Yeah, my my actual, like, fantasy Mario movie is... Mario just making Mario sounds and Luigi being his <laughs> translator. Exactly. <laughs> Mario <Great>. says... <laughs> Are you nude? I would Are be you nude? completely fine with that. <laughs> it's like if 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 I if they do a modern day Zelda movie, uh, I don't want Link to speak, ever. My, uh, my favorite... Happen, isn't it? Uh, fantasy casting of the Legend of Zelda movie, though, was uh, I saw a poster where they made Tom Holland into every character. <laughs> I did see that. That was Tom Holland that. is Link. Yeah. Tom Holland is Zelda. Tom Holland <laughs> is Ganondorf. Oh, <laughs> uh, do they call it Holandrul? <laughs> they should. I hope so. I. The strangest thing is, I almost foresee them making a Zelda movie now that you've said it. That yes. and Metroid. I'm surprised there hasn't been yeah. a Metroid movie yet, honestly. Yeah. Except I mean, you know that it's going to be like all Zero Suit Samus until the end when she finally puts on the, the you know, iconic armor. But, you know, okay, Samus the opposite is... opposite of the actual games. Yeah, <laughs> Samus is, is a hot blonde woman, so they're going to be like, well, we have to market it like that. We need that. to play to that. Yeah, we got to play, you know. But absolutely, I can't yeah, wait. They're... They should make a Star Fox movie for the furries. Oh, oh god, god, I don't want it. 
barrel you, you, roll. Yeah, exactly. That's the one thing you know would be in like every trailer. Would be like, do a barrel roll. Use the boost to get through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't I, want to see a movie or a TV show Star Fox, but I do want another Star Fox game. Me I want a too. Star Fox game that's not Star Fox sixty four. No, what was the? Was that the Star There's Fox sixty four? Was really good. No, 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 yeah. GameCube, that's what I'm thinking of, where you were actually Fox on the ground. You yeah, shut your... No, weird. most of that game was actually pretty bad. Yeah. It's, it's Star like this, Fox 64 is solid. It's like this, the uh, Sonic Adventure Battle games, where, like, the, really, the Sonic levels are really good, and the Shadow levels are really good, and then the rest of the game kind of sucks, but because those were really good, everyone's like, those games were awesome! It's like, were they? They were, like, 30% <laughs> awesome. Well, let me ask you, Megan, about... Star Fox on the ground, like, would you be a, against the uh, the tank coming back, for example? Because that was awesome. Uh, excuse me, it was fine. called the Landmaster. I... <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, Star Fox Adventures, where you're actually actually like Fox. Um, it it was like, I don't know, what, what would you call it? Just like your regular action adventure game. Um, yeah, so they so they weird. they did a little too much in that game. Yeah, it's the same thing where it was like it was fun when you were in the R wing, right? Because that's what Star Fox is. Is yeah. But then yeah. they were like, okay, the Landmaster, all right, that's reasonable. But then you're running around on foot, like trying to save dinosaurs, and you're like, I think yeah. this got a little got a little weird. You're running around with like a bazooka, yeah. and it's like I am. Hmm. That I, I didn't care for, but like, yeah, flying around or or just driving in the tank, that is that's totally fine. I'm into that. Apparently, there was a Wii U Star Fox. Oh, uh, with the Wii U, called... the forgotten system. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Star Fox Zero. I had a Wii U, and I don't even remember this existing. No, I, I don't remember hearing about it at all. Yeah, it has like basically between a seven and. A seven and a half to eight uh in terms of reviews that's which, not terrible 69 on metacritic nice nice um no, nice so eh, it could, could be worse i guess so I, if I, anyone out there has a wii existed. u i found a uh, full playthrough on youtube oh so there you go i don't know it doesn't now i mean you know, quick, quickly looking it doesn't look awful but yeah, it supposedly seems like it's supposed to be more like Star Fox 64 and less like yeah. uh, Star Fox Armageddon or whatever. My, my only spells. concern, though, is when I typed Star Fox Zero, the first thing that post that uh, came up was Star Fox Zero, bad game or baddest game? So, <laughs> Star Fox Zero sucks, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little wary considering it has 1.2 million views, so it might be... Uh, oh, oh, wow. Wow, it might for be a, a game, game I didn't even know like. existed. <laughs> I know, oh. but, but the game, my biggest other concern would be the fact that the playthrough is two hours and 54 minutes long. For a so total game? Ooh, that's bad. That makes me worried. Are, is it an AGDQ run? No. no. Oh. What, is, what does that mean? Awesome, er, awesome games done quick or whatever? Yeah, no. It's by some other random guy. But... I don't know. I might, I might, like, I watched the playthrough to see it, but I want a new Star Fox game. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Nintendo. Let's do it. Well, yeah. I mean, at least there's a Metroid game coming out soon. True. There is. Yes. Is there? Is it a 3D one? Or is yeah. it another side-scroller? Uh, actually, I don't know. I know. All I know is it's coming out on the Switch. Soon. Because I know Metroid Dread wasn't that long ago, was it? Mm-mm. But I'm I think old. they announced them exist together. Anymore. Where it was like, hey. we're doing Dread, but we're also putting out this other game later on. That's clever. That's good mm-hmm. advertising. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're going the Konami route. Listen, it's been 15 <laughs> years. Here's four Silent Hill games. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. We're Konami. <laughs> here's a remake, and uh, here's some new stuff. I, I'm still excited for it. I don't care. So... Pinto, you mess- messaged me the other day about Resident Evil 4 and how it says coming soon. Uh-huh. Are, are we thinking early release or pushed back? A lot of people are actually saying early release because Capcom is 
pretty good about their release dates, actually. Yeah. Um, I believe that uh, there was a pretty big game that they actually pushed the release date up for. I can't remember which one. There may be more than one. Clearly, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know that game. Yeah, that that one game that they were like, here it is a week early. And everyone was like, one. cool. Um, but Something we were excited for. Uh, Sun, uh, Sons of the Forest, is that coming out? in like... Next month, it's supposed to I be. Yeah, I think it's like about a month from now. I thought I it was so March. For that. I think it might be end of February. Which is March. But... Yeah, I know, but it's, just... it's still February. <laughs> it's still February, but yeah. I get your point. Yeah, I know. Damn uh, it, Pinto. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm excited for Sons of the Forest. Me too. Oh yeah. Have... I just want to meet Kelvin. I just we hope there's Kevin. ladders. <laughs> like that's that's honestly like my biggest gripe with the forest is ladders. You can, yeah, you can make zip lines, but zip lines <laughs> don't go up. It's they so sure much harder to build like vertical Rings. structures in that game. <laughs> they have uh, apparently like overhauled the whole crafting system, so that's we'll see. beneficial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, the, I have... the the crafting in the original works. It's just kind of janky. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited for it simply because. When they first launched the game, it was like an alpha, right? And it had a lot mm-hmm. of like, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out what their game's going to be. And I know that's a huge complaint for a lot of survival games. It's like, oh, you can craft stuff and you can you can build buildings or whatever. But they've obviously like put time into the story at this point. It's yeah. going to likely be close to, a, if not a full-fledged game right away, which is exciting. I hope. Fingers Thank crossed. You. <laughs> yeah, that that'll be nice. Uh, assuming that's the case, time will tell. It'll be it'll be good because we haven't had a lot of like multiplayer games recently either. Mm-mm. Uh, apart from our dalliances and Daisy, <laughs> and the, and Raft and playing the forest again, and of course Ultimate Chicken Horse. We still haven't finished uh, the raft together. Never did. We did not. Nope, we didn't. What day? The raft. Did, I I think the I raft. said the raft, and then it just caught on. So, take that. Isn't that a? Nope. Never mind. That book was called uh, the river, the not the raft. <laughs> oh no! Uh, uh, the <laughs> river was the, the sequel to Hatchet. Yeah. Yes. It was, it was one of the sequels. There yes, was which was sequel. then followed by Brian's Winter and then Brian's Return. I know. Thank you. Yes, but Raft and Brian or uh, Raft, the <laughs> River and Brian's Winter could not have both happened. Brian's Winter they is an alternate optional. story. Yes. Wait, really? Yes. Yes. They are not what? related. Yes. The river, the river is Brian goes home, and then the special forces are like, "Oh man, you're so cool! You should train our people how to survive." Right. And Brian's winter is he doesn't get rescued at the end of uh, Hatchet, and he Wait, stays there. Wait, what? The is this you like some that? Mandela effect? I don't remember that at all. Yes, I that's exactly what that was. So many specifically books. taught to me in sixth grade. Yes. Holy yeah. crap! I loved those books. That's exactly what happened. The river it was is an terrible. alternate history. The river is basically just like um, survival uh, speed run. Uh, basically, <laughs> with a knife on a boat with a dying man. Yeah, man, uh, man struck by lightning must save man. Go down river, build raft. <laughs> no, no, you missed an important part of the story. Man continuously poops and he has to clean it. He does. Yeah, he that's does. Oh, no. you're right. They poop. That I does think that's happen. Why I thought it was dumb. There's so much of that <laughs> yes. story. Just about There's so it. much of I can't even remember the guy's name. It was probably like Greg or something. There's so much of Brian just being like, "Oh, Greg smells again. I guess I have to clean him." <laughs> that's, that's actually oh, true. No. Yeah, he's like he he like smells something. I forget exactly, but he's something like he smells it or he hears him like making noises or something and he's then, like worried he's gonna attract stuff with the poop or something it's, i don't know if that's the case but yeah it's like, i gotta clean him wow it's very nasty remember that was not related situation. to games at all God, wipe the dying man's ass <laughs> could be a game 
Let yeah, let's con. <laughs> yeah. Is Gary Paulson still alive? Let's no, contact he died him. two years ago. Oh. Well, let's make, we can, let's, hey, let's make a I game mean, out of the ha- the Hatchet uh, trilogy and discount the river. Yeah, I think they we, were we can make Dying Man Asswipe Simulator all our own. I think they were making a um a mo- or considering a movie. I don't know if they ever actually made it. I thought they did make a Hatchet movie. It turned every other book into one. Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine it's great. Like, it's probably not that good. Just watch Castaway. It's, yeah, it's just a kid in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, it's a kid in the woods, Watch and like everything's games. an internal monologue, so that gets weird. Yeah. So they talk about that time he tries to kill himself right at the beginning, because that's fun. Jesus. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Well, it's not right at the beginning. Yeah, very early but though. He's it's like, early he's on. Yes. Yeah. He slices his wrist with a hatchet. Whoa. And I, that's actually what he does. I, I <laughs> don't remember that either. Holy crap! Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that at That's all. That's a lot darker than I remember. Yeah, he. Yeah. It's like a plane flies overhead and he tries to, you know, get its attention, and he fails and just keeps going. And he thinks that he's doomed, and he tries to end it. And then he wakes up and he realizes how stupid that was, and has a newfound appreciation to survive. So, you know, okay, to, to to pull this back to video games, <laughs> can I just say how in the forest, one of your first goals is to build that big-ass SOS out of rocks, and that does nothing. Yeah. Why do you do it? To because make you feel like you're trying to get rescued. It's a, it's a really simple crafting thing for people to do. We should you know? just cover the entire island in giant SOSs. SOS. <laughs> <laughs> Cut down all the trees and replace them with rock structures. Wouldn't it, that would be a great like Easter egg where like if you put it in the right space, Alternate someone actually ending. shows up. <laughs> you don't have to shoot down a plane; one just lands. I, I heard resistance. It's also canon that like you're you're a survivalist, and like that's why yeah. you're you're so good at you know all the stuff Surviving. you do. Thanks, mm-hmm. Megan. I was trying not to. Can you use that word in a sentence? Yes. You're One who survives. <laughs> the ultimate survivor. One who is the best friends with Jeff Probst. <laughs> Sorry, Pinto. No, I was just uh, voicing some gripes. That's all. <laughs> Just so you know, Tom, I thought you said one with Greg Proops. <laughs> ah, yes. Like, like the Renowned guy prop like comedian anyway. Greg yes. Proops. <laughs> I, was, I was so confused at first. You must put on the fusion earrings and align with Greg Proops to become the ultimate whose line is in any way comedian. <laughs> the most occasional <laughs> fourth guest on whose force. line is it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you 1% of anybody that listens to this even knows who Greg Proops is, and I hope that they learn. I hope that they come away from this episode of the podcast <laughs> and they look up Greg Proops and they find a super cut, and that's all they do for the next two days. I hope so, too. Who's Line was a good show. It's a great show. It's still I'm on, fan. actually. Yeah, they brought it back. Uh, I, I bet Greg Proops still does it from time he to does, time. He does, actually. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Haven't even seen it right on the money. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. They should make a Whose Line Is It Anyway, the video game. Dude, no. <laughs> Have you seen, like, any like any video game based on... Well, I was going to say game shows, but, like, Hollywood Squares? It's yeah. like, we've um, got one celebrity, and it's the guy who played Raven's brother, whose name I can't remember, Brad Garrett? Yeah, Brad yeah, Garrett. That sounds right. In the middle, <laughs> and then it's just like, uh, I'm not the best six, yeah, eight random other people who were gonna act like our celebrities, but we couldn't get the licensing, so we've got Brad Garrett and generic Chris, <laughs> Michael, Chris, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> and then yeah, and Jeff. then it, and then it's like. We put Brad Garrett in the middle so everyone will select him because it's tic-tac-toe and, and we've got video clips of, Bl- of Brad Garrett. Yep. Yeah, so but that's really that's fun. exactly why I'm saying we should do it because <laughs> games like that are hilarious, intentional or not. Remember Guts, the game? Ooh, on like, uh, was it Nintendo S- or Super Nintendo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, SNES, yeah. yeah. The question is, and do I'm... you have it? No. Do, 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 do you have it? 
I don't. Do, 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 do they have. tried to bring Guts back too, actually, and it uh, it didn't go well. Was Guts the show that like you there was you had to like pull the flags out of like the giant nose, or was that something else? No, that was that was um oh uh, double dare. Yeah. Ah, okay. Another yeah, no. Nickelodeon. Did you did you guys ever see Nick Arcade? Yes. No. I used to dream about being on that show. Being so on it, yeah. So awesome. Because uh, this is actually about video games. Um, Good. Back in the day, <laughs> they had all these arcade machines there, and the entire game is about answering video game trivia, and then you go on, you compete in the games, try to get the higher score than the other person, and then they would put you in the video game. Mm-hmm. And you were on a green screen, and you had to like hit these different targets and jump over stuff and, and do different things, and then you could win a Nintendo 64, and it was great. It's so, a dream. I, uh, I loved uh nick arcade and i'm surprised they haven't done something else like that these days because the technology for that would be a lot better oh for sure do you guys put someone in vr yeah do you remember the tv uh show um it was like g g4 or something right yeah they brought that back briefly it's dead again again already yeah okay well I remember when that first started up, I was so excited, and then it wasn't that good, actually. Mm-hmm. They they had shows that were just trailers of video games. Yeah, that's what yeah, And I would just sit there watching it like yep. an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, it was YouTube. The, the they, best they show brought they it had back. on there, they, they had a show where they uh, acted things out in MMOs. So, like, they did stuff in, like... Um, EverQuest, for example, and they treated it like a soap opera, so they did voice acting for all the characters, and then they would throw it to, like, different stories over all these different games. It was very funny. Uh, I have no idea what it was called, but I liked that segment a lot. I think they... I I mean, people just do that on YouTube now, so I guess it's not like... That's true. You know know what I mean? It's not like it's... It's it's still niche, but, like, you know... It's kind of weird. I don't know. That's... What happened to G4? YouTube ate G4, basically. Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, they brought it back, and they had, like, Xavier Woods from the WWE and Sasha Gray, a retired porn star, as, like, their hosts. <laughs> and it's like, okay, but, like, what can you do that that's not on YouTube? That's really mm-hmm. what, your like, YouTube did eat G4. <laughs> yeah. YouTube, the Complete was... Pete was on it. Uh, Gerard. The complete EP. Oh, per, per, Pro Gerard, the com, Complardinist? Yeah. Um, yeah, he was on it. Uh, he was like a staff member. <laughs> they collapsed, and now he's not. And he's on YouTube, and very yeah. successful, so who cares? Yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. I mean, the other thing is, you, you mentioned Sasha Gray being on it. G4, like, in its older days, devolved into, like, Spike TV by the end of it. Yeah. Oh, man. The end of Spike TV was something to behold, though. <laughs> when they just went on, tw- like, whoever ran the Twitter just, like, had a meltdown. <laughs> oh, I remember that. And then they just, like, doubled down. They're like, Spike TV for men. It's men. So much men. We show cops for 20 hours a day and then a (laughs) Star Wars movie for men. (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, my favorite thing on Spike TV was those, like, world's dumbest things that they used to put up that are now on uh, True TV, I think. Which used to be Court TV. Remember when that was a thing and they would just show Court? Everyone loved like that. Like legitimate court or entertaining <laughs> yeah. court? No, legitimate court. It oh. was just videos of court. That sounds Something extremely boring. That. Yeah. Anyway. I've never played a Phoenix Wright game in my life. That? No, I would. They're very, like, visual novel I think. See, I like that, though. I like visual I... novels. I would be fine with that. Last I'd... year, there was apparently a Phoenix Wright game with a clown girl in it who had large honkers, and the internet went wild. Oh, God. Wait, big horns? No, like... Clown big, girl you know, jokes! I, I, get, I get what you're saying. But, yeah, apparently it was, like, a whole big thing, and I was like, why is Phoenix Wright trending? Oh. Titties. Yeah. It'll get you every time. Mm-hmm. Guys, I think it's time to put this podcast... Never! Together. Why? Why would you think that? Because we've devolved into talking about clown boobs? Yes. 
<laughs> That's exactly why. <laughs> the only clown I like. <laughs> I've made a honkers pun. It's time to go. <laughs> That's got to be a restaurant somewhere. Uh, checking oh. the viewership, yeah. Uh, just tanked. <laughs> See you um, guys. Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking with us to this point. If you're still here. This was a uh, really, really meandering episode. Like it was. We, it, it, not, the Last of a... Us, Star Fox, uh, Hatchet, and the the duality Clowns. of the Hatchet sequels. Clowns. Anyway. Clowns. Uh, you can find our stuff online if you're still interested at uh, joypadpod.com. Yes? yes? Yes. I think. I see I see nodding. Perfect. Uh, anyway, uh, Tom, please uh, walk us out. No matter what kind of honkers you're into, we'll always <laughs> be here for you. Stay joyful, my friends. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Honk, honk. Bye. <laughs> Skeeter, is that you? 